My guest says he's found his exact name and destiny in code, in the Bible. He says everyone's name and vital information is also encoded in the Bible. Next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, and I'm here with Yaakov Ramsel. Yaakov is the man that supernaturally heard a word from God and found there were secret codes hidden in the scriptures. Tell me the first time you found a secret code in the Jewish Bible. It was quite a few years ago. I was studying the Book of Ruth because it was after the Passover, and you count 50 days till you come to Sukkot or, or Shavuot. And I, I always study Ruth during this period because that's the counting of the Omer. So I'm in the first chapter and I'm praying. I always pray over my word and, and God always opens his word unto me. He always has and he will for anyone. But what is so magnificent, and I think it was a verse five, Ruth 1, 5. In there I found every 12th letter a magnificent code. And 12 is significant because it speaks of government, it speaks of the nation of Israel. The 12 tribes. The 12 tribes, yes. And so every 12th letter in there spelled Hashet Melech Yeshua. In English, what this means is Jesus is the appointed king. Isn't that interesting? Why, why would it be in that chapter in Ruth? Any because idea? that is a messianic chapter. The whole book of Ruth is messianic. It talks about the genealogy from Boaz, Obed, Boaz, uh, Jesse, and also David. And in there is a, uh, the genealogy leading up because Yeshua, the Messiah, when he would come, which he did come, would be called the son of David. Why? Because he will be the ruling monarch when he comes back. He will be the right. king, not only of Israel, but of the universe. Now explain to me, in a simplistic fashion, how this code works throughout all of the Tanakh, the Jewish scriptures. Let's go to Genesis 1. Let's, mm -hmm. let's start at the beginning. And the first letter, the first word, from the first word is brashit, which means in the beginning, the first letter is the bet, second letter of the Hebrew aleph bet. Every seventh letter, counting the bet and count seven, and then seven spells created. Well, that's, that's beautiful. Every seventh mm -hmm. letter spells created. But from that first letter, the word created is encoded six times in the first six days of creation, starting with that first letter. Well, there's six days of creation. So it stands to reason that the word created would be encoded six times to back up what the surface reading is saying. So that's an example. Now, sometimes the codes might be eight letters apart, counting every eighth letter. It, it's sort of like as a child, I might have played, and I did, I played a game where I'd look at a sheet of paper and it would, wouldn't make any sense, but then I'd have the key to the code. Let's say the key was seven. I would count every seven letters and then write that letter down. Before right. I know it, I'd have a word and then I'd have a sentence. Yes, this is exactly right. One of the most fantastic, most awesome things that God has placed in the Bible is the surface and the foundation of the surface. The foundation of the surface reading of the Torah and all the way through the Tanakh are the codes that back up what the surface reading is saying. I'll give you an example. In Genesis 1, there's 1,671 Hebrew letters that form uh, those 30, uh, 31 verses, mm -hmm. which is six days of creation. In there is encoded at various intervals, some at two letter intervals, some at every third letter, some at every tenth letter, some at every fiftieth letter, are over 2,000 biblical names that are mentioned later on in the scripture. 
you know, it's mentioned before these people even existed. That's right, and it, ha it gives information. Is there any explanation besides the fact that God authored the book of Genesis that that could be there? Is there any other explanation? It's been proven scientifically by the statisticians, by the skeptics, and the greatest mathematicians of the world that only someone that had a power that is outside of our space and time could have arranged those letters and that chapter, or the whole Bible for that fact, the way they are arranged. So this proves to us that that person that is outside of space and time is none other than the Creator God. Hmm. You know, um, I remember my dad who was born in Poland from a traditional Jewish yes. background. He said to me one day, Sid, show me why you believe that the Messiah has already come. Mm. And so I read to him the 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah. And he said to me, show me where it says Jesus in there. And I couldn't show that to him. What's under the surface in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah? That was written 800 years before Jesus came to earth. First, What's in there? First, let me give you the validity of the book of Isaiah. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, they found the book of Isaiah uh, dated back to about 23, 2400 years ago. It is identical to the Masoretic text that I use today. So no one's tampered with Nobody's it. tampered with it. So that gives us validity and credibility to the word. Now, in Isaiah 53, the 53rd chapter, there's 667 Hebrew letters that form that whole chapter. But yet there are thousands of codes in there. One day I was praying, and I re read Isaiah 53 so many times. I just mm -hmm. loved this because it's speaking about my Messiah. He's speaking about my Lord speaking about somebody that would be executed in my place. And I prayed and I said, Lord, your name is there somewhere. And he spoke to me in my spirit. I could hear his voice. It was so sweet. He said, go to verse 10 and go to the word Yivrik. It means he shall prolong his days and count 20 in reverse. Well, I ran inside. I was outside walking as I do, and I pray in the morning. I ran inside, opened up my Hebrew Tanakh, and I started counting from that area every 20th letter. And my, my friend, I'll tell you, the scriptures opened up like a volume, like heaven was opened up. And he showed me in there every 20th letter was a phrase, Yeshua Shmi, which means Jesus is my name. And from the first party, this is what's interesting. My name is Jesus, or Jesus is my name. I didn't stop there. I did the complete analysis at every possible combination in Isaiah 6, 6, with, uh, Isaiah 53 with the 667 letters. And I did thousands and thousands of codes that come out of there. But the one that stands out, it's like the sparkle in the gem is the one that says, Ma'al Yeshua Shmi Aznir Ergnai. Which and, means? Which means from above. My strong name is Jesus, the light of the Lord. Wow. From wow. above, my strong name is Jesus, the light, the light of the Lord. Our light's going on right now. We'll be right back. You think that's something. Wait till you hear what else Yako found in this very, very descriptive chapter penned by Isaiah 800 years before the Messiah came to earth. Don't go away. YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. You know, if you had just heard what I heard from Yaakov during the break. Oy vey, Yaakov. Before we go back to Isaiah 53, your name is in code in the Torah. Tell me what they found 
Okay, a friend of mine who uh, did a research, and he, I don't look for my name, but he wanted to find it for me, and he did. And it's in the Torah, in the book of Deuteronomy, right around where the Shema is. That's wonderful. Oh, yeah, and, I, and Deuteronomy 6.4. Six, six, four. Four. And so in there is encoded every 80th letter, Yaakov Ramzo, Hallelujah. And it means I will praise. Mm. Oh, I will praise the Lord. So the, I thought that was great because I do this. Uh, that's nothing new to me. Mm -hmm. But right next to my name. At but the wait a second. If I could have anything written next to my name, I would like, I will praise the Lord. I can't think of anything better. That's the greatest thing because that's all I do. That's, and what, that's, David, all I that's do. what David did. He that's was a what? man after God's own heart. That's what you are, Yaakov. They find anything else in there oh, about you? Uh, no, but I did. Then I started to say I verified it. Mm -hmm. And so I did the complete analysis. In other words, uh, I did 80 codes at one time, 80 researches at one time. I don't use a computer. I do it all by hand like the ancient rabbis did many centuries ago. Why don't you use a computer? Because some of the computers have flaws, hmm. but the word doesn't. And everything I verified by the word, by hand count, I count each letter. That, that is the rabbinical way. That is, absolutely. So what else did you find? Well, next to my name also is Shlavim. And that is the modern Hebrew term for equidistance letter sequence. And that's exactly what I do. That's the technical name for finding codes in the Bible. Exactly. An equal distance of the letters. And then another phrase that comes in there. Uh, that would have been enough. Yeah. There's another one. <laughs> oh, yes. It's Oti Haish. It means the man of letters. And that's what the scholars had called many centuries ago. Anybody that did analysis on the, on the codes, the encrypted uh, messages that came out of the Bible, they called him a man of letters. How could that be in the Torah? How could that be in Deuteronomy 6.4? It's you know, the Shema. Well, God had to put it there because he wrote, remember, he wrote the commandments. He wrote the Bible. Now, here's another thing that's fascinating. My son and daughter's name is encoded next to mine and also my wife, Yaffa, right next to me. And it describes my wife physically. So I know it's my wife. You see, it describes her physically. And you met my wife. Now, Yaakov, do you believe that everyone's name is encoded in the Scripture somewhere? I know everyone name, everyone's name is there. From Genesis 1 through the Torah, you go through the whole Torah, everybody, everything, past, present, and future is in there, also what they will do. Now, hmm. what's so magnificent, the 66 important Jewish people that they did rich researches on the last, that lived in the last thousand years. They found all their names in the Torah. The 66, what, most famous? Most famous Jewish men, yes. All of them in the Torah. In the Torah, they found their date of birth. Their now, exact date of birth or the year? Exact, no, the exact date of birth. They also found later, some others tried to disprove it. And later they found the city they were born in. My now goodness. that is amazing. And a lot of these people were Polish Jewish people like yourself. See, my grandfather come, came from Poland. A little Jewish man. Well, Ashkenazi. <laughs> yes, Ashkenazi, yeah. And it was so magnificent that all these wonderful things are in there. It doesn't excite me as much as finding the names of God, especially our Messiah. That excites me more than anything else. Let's take uh, what the rabbis would call a messianic prophecy. Uh, yeah. Proverbs, the 30th chapter, uh, the fourth verse, w w who created the heavens, the, the earth, what is his name? Yeah. Obviously, you're going to say God, but then the, the, the proverb goes on to say, and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? What did you find in there? You know, it's, it's so superior to any writing that's outside the Bible. There's no writing that I know of that can even come close to what the Bible writes. Now, in there it says, surely you know, not can one tell. That's the regular Hebrew uh, rendition, okay? The, that's the perfect mm -hmm. uh, interpretation surely of that. You surely know. you know. What he's does that mean? Us, means we should, we should know for sure. We should know for sure, for sure. what his son's <laughs> name is. Huh. Yeah. So what did you find encoded there? Every 20... Two letters. 
Now, 22 speaks of the Hebrew alphabet. Mm -hmm. There's 22 Hebrew letters in the alphabet. Every 22 letters it spells Shai Yeshua, which means Jesus is the gift. And that's the name of his son. It identifies his son from the book of Proverbs. This was almost 3,000 years ago when that was written. Well, when it Solomon. says, surely you shall know, <laughs> then right. obviously that would be encoded in there. And also in there, it talks about the temple. It talks about the sacrificial lamb. It talks about ashami, it's my, my sin offering. That's in All Proverbs. In yes, in that one little verse. Huh. Well, let's go back to the 53rd chapter of Isaiah that was written some 800 years before Yeshua, the Messiah, mm -hmm. came to earth. Uh, what did you find there? Okay, in Isaiah 53, 5, where it says, He was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. In there is a code, every 21 letters, that says, They shall pierce his flesh. Hmm. They shall pierce his flesh. And adjacent to that is shalim, which means uh, the, the, the cross, or like the uh, execution stake. You see, next to that is, this is amazing, Slavi Shalos, it means three execution stakes. And there were three, three on the hill. I'll tell you yes, what, hold, hold that thought. I mean, this is 800 years before the Messiah came to earth to have his name, to have three execution stakes. If you think that's something, wait till you hear what else he found. We'll be right back, don't go away. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter here. I'm here with the most fascinating man, Yaakov Ramsel. He's the one that by hand has found thousands of hidden codes buried in the Tanakh, the Jewish scriptures, that reveal what the text says, reveal hidden meanings. For instance, the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, written some 800 years before the Messiah came to earth. I know I read this to my Orthodox Jewish father, and he said, stop, you're reading from a Christian Bible. I said, Dad, this is the Tanakh that I got at my bar mitzvah. It's a Jewish Bible. Well, Yaakov, if I had known the codes, what were some of the other things that I would have found hidden just beneath the surface of Isaiah 53 in a very simplistic equal letter distancing sequence. One of the things was King Herod. And you heard of Herod's temple. Yes. That existed during the time of Yeshua, about 2,000 years ago, until it was destroyed by the Romans in AD 70. Now, also the evil Roman city is encoded there. They were the conquerors of Israel at that time. Also Caesar is encoded there. Now, he was the, the head man of Rome at the time. He was the dictator, so to speak. But <clears throat> that, that's, I knew that would be there. I had no problem with this. What excited me was all the disciples. All that, the first followers of the Messiah. All 12 of the disciples, but one was encoded in Isaiah 53 in that little pocket of area there. And, and uh, so magnificent what God had placed in there. It described some of them. It called them... T uh, Tam Tam you know, the Talmud. Talmudim. Yeah, Talmudim, the disciples, uh, the students. And the one that was missing was the one man, Yehuda, or Judas, that betrayed Yeshua for 30 pieces of silver. I, I wonder, I just wonder if the Tanakh could not be the book of life, because you, we pray that our name not be removed from the book of life, and, yes. and Yehuda, Judas, was removed. That's right. Okay. Here's my take on that. I'm glad you brought that up. This is so important. I believe there are many books because we have the book of remembrance from the book of Malachi mm -hmm. where those that thought about the Lord and feared him and uh, followed his commandments. That's called the book of remembrance. In that day when we stand before the king of kings, those books will be open. Many books will be open. And the Lamb's book of life will be open. Now the, the Torah and the Tanakh, that's the old complete what is called normally the Old Testament. I like to call it the first covenant. Mm -hmm. And 
It is the book of life, but it is the book of life and death. It is a complete history of God's creation, of every person that ever lived, etc., all the way down to the consummation of the age. That is not the book that uh, the redeemed are in. They're in there, but that is not the book where only the redeemed are in. What is the book that only those that are going to heaven are in? That's called the Lamb's book of life. Those that accepted the sacrifice, those who accepted the Lamb of God, those who accepted the Yeshua as the Messiah, that is the Lamb's book of life, and their names are written in That's heaven. the better book to be in. That's right. That's the book of the redeemed. Well, I've got to ask you this. Have people taken other big books like War and Peace or Shakespeare's and tried this equal letter distancing thing? The uh, challenge went out many years ago for the statisticians, mathematicians, and the cryptologists mm -hmm. to try to disprove the validity of the Bible codes. A man I know, and I won't mention his name, that was the head cryptologist at NASA, National Security Agency up north. He <clears throat> made a program himself, a Bible program himself. He wanted to disprove that these codes were non-existent. They were just happenstance, that it just, uh, you could find it in anything. So he fed in there, War and Peace, and all these other uh, Hebrew written, uh, you know, like War and Peace and so forth, these different books that were written in Hebrew. And, when he, and even the Talmud, put the Talmud in there. And they had certain little codes in there, but it's very insignificant. But when he came to the Tanakh, to the Torah and Tanakh, it was a total mass of code, like a severe of code, like it was from one end to the other. It was unstoppable. Nothing to compare with it. Then he put other languages in there, books with other languages, Chinese, or whether it's Spanish and Latin, et cetera, et cetera. Then little codes here and there, nothing significant. Only in the Hebrew Bible are these codes found. And I'm talking every letter is used in codes multiple times, not once, but many times. That's why. You see, in the Hebrew Tanakh, there's 1,196,922 Hebrew letters that compose the Hebrew Tanakh from Genesis to Malachi or, uh, or Chronicles. Okay? That's a lot of letters. But m imagine for a moment that each letter conveys perhaps a thousand codes at different count intervals. That's how we can have it for everyone that's ever that's lived. Right. Yeah, you know what occurs to me? Your name is in the Tanakh, in the Jewish scriptures, with your destiny. What? You had nothing to do with that. God, who knew you before you were conceived in your mother's womb, chose you and appointed you, put that in his book. There is one book you can have control over. That's called, as Yaakov said, the Lamb's Book of Life. You can get your name in that. First, you have to repent of your sins. Tell God you're sorry, because against God and God alone have you sinned. Turn from your sins and ask that the blood of the same Messiah in Isaiah 53, Yeshua, Jesus the Messiah, his blood would wash away your sins. And as Isaiah says, by his stripes you were healed. By his blood you were healed. And God will wash away your sins. Then when you're clean, you can have intimacy with God. You can reach out and say, Abba, Father, I make Yeshua my Messiah and Lord. Let him wrap his arms around you. Let him love you. Let him hold you. He does care about you. You are special. You really are.